Hello and welcome to another PyQ tutorial here in Mad Pony Interactive Channel. Today we're going to look at custom windows for applications and how we can build a custom window that doesn't have a frame around it. Applications don't need to be square all the time, so if you want to make a, if it's a fun application, you can you can make it have any shape you like. Now there's a few videos out there in YouTube that show you how to achieve this. What they don't show you is how to implement maximization for the window and resizing for the window and all that. What you're seeing right now is a full width of my desktop, which consists of three monitors and I'm using an Ifinity group. So uh, that the computer think that, thinks that this is just one monitor and that's why you're seeing such a big thing right here. Um, Ifinity Group is uh, is something from NVIDIA uh, that connects several monitors and turns it in, into just one desktop. So what we have here is a multi-monitor setup. And what we're going to achieve in this tutorial is that we're going to create this window uh, without a, a, a usual frame uh, with, uh, as you can see, that as, as a border radius. So uh, it has transparency applied to it and we're going to be able to resize this window as we like and we're going to uh, be able to maximize it to the different monitors including the monitor where I have my little bar uh, my windows bar right there we're also going to be able to maximize it like that uh, full screen and what I did is uh, just a double click here with the user we could have a button instead and we can minimize the tray uh, minimize to, to bar like that as well and close it. Another thing is that uh, I see many applications do this that um, the app doesn't go off screen as you can see. I can try and push it off screen it does not let me go uh, make it go off screen and I see a lot of apps that have that problem uh, next thing you know the app is off screen and you don't know where the app is <laughs> and it's a problem. So um, let's get cracking let's find out what code uh, you can move to the next chapter I'm just going to talk a little bit about what's going to going to happen uh, I'm not going to share the code here today because um, I'm working on a pip package for us uh, for the viewers of the ch this channel and other people as well a pip package that is going to help us create uh, applications faster and simplify the process of creating applications the pip package hopefully will be available next week and the code for this tutorial will be included in there you'll also have the uh, access to the code of these this app that I'm creating right now for us this is an app that is going to help us uh, create applications faster uh, and it's meant to go with uh, Qt Designer to ease the process of creating applications with PyQt so yeah, I haven't been lacking off, uh, I've been gone for a week, but I have been doing a lot of stuff for us. There's a lot of tutorials coming. I know that the last tutorial I talked about creating uh, path animation, but before we get into path animation, we really need to learn how to create paths uh, using QPainter. And that's probably what I'll do in the next tutorial. But for now, let's look at the code that achieved this. So here we are with our usual uh, version check, uh, you can check that out. My application right now looks like this with a frame as usual and as soon as we add this flag and there's two ways of adding flags you can add flags like this or you can add flags like like this so here I'm just adding a one single flag and here when you say flags that is going to overwrite any flag that you already have with the flags that you are providing so the flag that does what we want is frameless window hint and as soon as I do that you can see that my app now doesn't have that uh, frame but uh, you can see that I, I already have the um, functionality to move the window and all that but you won't be able to move the window or do anything like that now another thing that is important is at the state that we have the window right now if we try to max maximize it uh, to one screen it's just gonna maximize to the full screen so in multi-monitor setup it's important that you have this flag as well window maximize button hint and this is gonna make sure that we maximize just to one screen now we gotta figure out which screen the user has um, is hovering at the moment and we're gonna show I'm gonna show you in code how you can achieve that to make my uh, window transparent I can use the set attribute uh, WA underscore translucent background. That's going to make my background transparent so that I can use an image to make a custom size and shape for my window. As you can see now my window is basically uh, transparent. It's gone as you can see there. Uh, the problem what's going on here is that in Qt Designer I made my main window have that gradient that you were looking at and now as soon as I made it transparent 
I made my my Q main window is the one that has transparency, and so any background that I have on my Q main window is gonna be gone. So what I'll do is that I'll add this not instead of the main window. I can add it to the main window, but I'll add it to the Q widget, uh, central widget. Okay, like that. So if I say OK and save this, now it's added to the central widget. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to show you, uh, I created a widget and added it to the central widget and called that widget header, this area up here. That's the widget that I'm looking at to, oh, thank you very much, it's our horizontal spacer. The widget that I'm looking at to allow the, use, the user to grab and move the window with. So only the thing that I placed there is just a few buttons and this is gonna be a link for the website, is a link for the website, and the name of the application. So if I save this and go back, now we should have that background. Okay, so transparency. You can see the borders popping out here. Uh, which I should talk about the status bar. The status bar is a widget that comes with Q main window and it allows you to show a status right there as you can see. Uh, this is similar to the custom um, help, help thing that we did a few videos ago. Uh, the only the only thing is that if I go back to Qt Designer very fast, uh, the status bar is here. It brings a, what's called a Q size grip, and this is the grip that allows you to change the size of the window. You can uh, include this uh, on any custom widgets if if you like. Now the thing is, the the status bar uh, is outside of the central widget, and that's why we get those borders that you you seen um, when you apply. A border width to your uh, central widget or and I have one to the status bar as well to add uh, text down there as you were seeing you just select a widget in your application and you come here to status tip and you put something in there so you got the tooltip you got the status tip now there are limitations for the status bar and that's why I showed you on the other video how you can do a custom one so that you have no limitations so that's what we have here on the init for uh, this subclass of Q main window. And then I'm just opening up uh, the main window, uh, importing it like that. And then I'm doing an initialization of my UI elements, which is down here, when I have my connections and all that stuff. So what I'm doing is I've, I'm grabbing that header that we just looked at and I'm installing an event filter on that header. I'm also inserting a permanent widget, but I don't want to go to everything that we have here. I'm installing an event filter as soon as I initialize it, and here is my event filter. So in my event filter, what I'm doing is I'm asking if the object name is named header, because this is the guy that I'm interested in. Uh, you can look for objects na object names like this, and as you can see in Qt Designer, my object name is Heather okay so yeah I'm grabbing that okay let's look at what's inside so I have several elements in my main window and uh, the first thing I'm asking here is if logo is under mouse the event filter is just gonna trigger uh, when I'm doing stuff here to the header which is this area here that I just showed you so what I'm saying is if logo is under mouse this logo here and the event type is a Q event mouse button release and I'm catching it on the release not on the press I'm saying web browser and this is from Python I've imported web browser up here as you can see uh, import web browser so I open that link on my default browser and I return true to stop propagating the event I don't want to do anything else so what happens is if I press this here it's gonna open up this page uh, for the Mad Cute GitHub page. You know how it is with my tutorials. If I'm teaching you one thing, you'll end up learning a lot more. So the next thing I'm doing, and we, we know what that's doing, and then I'm saying else, and because we are inside of header, I'm only looking at what's happening inside of header, else we're gonna do a bunch of stuff that we're gonna look at right now. Hey, 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 hey where are you going? This is simple stuff. Don't don't be scared. You don't need to leave now. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see what's happening here. We only catching four different events: mouse double click, release, press, and move. Important to re to to talk about this. Mouse move is not when you are moving my mouse like this. Okay. Mouse move, it's two events in one. 
it only triggers if I press my mouse down and then start moving. If you want something like uh, when you're doing that, it's mouse over, okay? You should know this and you should find easily find what events are happening by doing a print event dot type. On mouse double click, what I'm doing is I'm going to self, which is the window, and I'm going to set its window state. We, and you'd have different states like full screen, maximized, show normal, minimized to tray, whatever. And I'm looking at the window, I'm setting the window state to be whatever the window current state is. And I'm using, I believe it's called the PyQt operator, that it's going to invert the state. So if it's full screen, it becomes normal and if it's normal it becomes full screen that's what this statement here is doing on the mouse double click and as soon as you double click I'm saying return true do not propagate this any further so that's how we do the full screen by a double click and you could obviously have a button instead of this event one thing I forgot to mention is that this label is inside of the of our widget of our adder widget but I'm consuming its event with that event that I just showed you in the beginning. This label is not consuming any event. So, and, but these buttons are, these buttons, they're buttons that consume the Hoover event. So when I press any of these widgets that are inside of this widget called header, uh, they are going to consume the event and not propagate it down the chain. So I don't, I don't need to worry about that when I'm here. So what I'm doing on the second part is just I'm catching the mouse release event and I'm checking if the event, because different event types, they bring different, um, they have different methods or functions. So bright, bright screen coming up, hang on, I told you. So they have different functions. So if I grab that event and I, I, if I write it down here in the documentation, in fact, let me let me look at Q event instead. Qt core Q event. If we get Q event, we can see that there's a bunch of events here, and we have mouse event. We also have Hoover event, Enter event, and some others. But you'll notice that we don't have a mouse release event. But mouse release, mouse press event, mouse double click event, they're mouse events. So if we press mouse event, we'll see that it has some methods. Okay. Now, you can see that on my example, I'm not, instead of global pause, I'm using global position. And that's why, that's because if you use global pause, it's going to say that it's going to be deprecated soon. So, uh, at the moment, until they update their documentation, we can use print dear event like this. And if I run that and actually trigger the event, you can see that all the methods that we have available right here and you can see where I got global position from. We also have global pause, but it's marked for deprecation, which means it's not going to be available in, in future versions. The pause is also marked for deprecation. We are now using position and there's, there's other, uh, other ones in here as well. So if you get stuck, you can do that. What I'm doing here on the release event is I'm checking if the event global position and this is the mouse position for this the old screen old desktop screen the Y I'm grabbing that and I'm grabbing the Y and I'm asking if the Y is smaller than 10 pixels and self moved and this moved I'm getting from uh, event grabbers and I'll show you how uh, what, what's that doing in a second I'm checking that and if that's the case I'm gonna show maximized and I'm also gonna save the my geometry to a variable that I have a uh, custom variable here custom attribute uh, with the geometry of the, the window so that I can use it later on down here on the other events I'm gonna print here the event global position okay so mouse release gave me 2000 pixels and this is the X a Q point float and this is the Y so if I bring it all the way up here almost all the way up there you can see that now the Y is 54 if I go back to the left a bit you can see that okay so you can see that that's the coordinates uh, of my widget and, and they are relative to this corner here alright so what I'm saying is that if I take these up 
and my mouse position is at minus m less than 10 pixels from the top of the monitor you will maximize it like that okay that's what I'm saying right there now why am I saving the geometry because down here on the mouse move event I'm gonna use that we also have a mouse button press event and I do return through here so that I stop event propagation I release the mouse I don't want a, a double click to in, to affect me in any any way now let's look at the third one the third one is a mouse button press and all I do on a mouse button press is I save the, what's called the event scene position when the mouse is moving and this scene position is relative to my window so basically let me just look at this so if I click here from like, let's say 200 pixels from the left and about 50 pixels from the top when I click here so it's the the event the scene position in this context of a mouse move of, of a mouse button press actually is relative to the to the mouse relative to the window so here I would be at 50 pixels from the top and about 200 and something pixels from the left if I pressed here I would be at 0 0 okay so that's important there's different positions and you need to check out which position are you looking at you can also use mapping uh, I don't think I used mapping on this application no I didn't uh, we'll go over mapping later on on other videos so all I'm doing is saving this pre the, 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 as a previous mouse position and I'm s also saying that self moved is false because I'm using self moved up here uh, on mouse button release I won't do that uh, unless it has moved unless the user has moved the window I will not maximize it so that's important okay let's go to the last one and it's the actual mouse move event so a mouse move event is when we click and drag something that's a mouse move it's not just when the mouse moves when the mouse moves is just a mouse hoover now I'm actually asking if the window state is full screen or if the window state is maximized I'm gonna show normal and I'm gonna grab that previous mouse position again okay but this time I'll, I will be basing that position on the previous geo width times 0.5 which is basically saying divided by 2 so half the width of my geometry of my uh, application and the Y as 50 pixels so this is hard coded but 50 pixels basically if I run it all I'm saying is self geo width half half so it's around the center and 50 pixels is from the top down 50 pixels so I'm making this my previous mouse position uh, inside my my application here we're grabbing a Delta okay so I am grabbing I'm, I'm calling this screen position to the event global position is basically where the mouse is relative to the screen so I'm grabbing that and I'm subtracting the previous mouse position and getting the Delta so this is Delta I called it pause here but this is a Delta it's usually called a Delta now you remember that my previous mouse position is grabbed when I click when I press my button but if the window is maximized or in full screen I want to I want to overwrite that and say that actually I want my mouse to be in the uh, in the previous geometry uh, center okay so with that I'm also grabbing the self geometry which is the geometry of the window at the moment the width the height and the placement inside the screen I'm saying that X it's equal to that position that Delta X right and Y is equal to the Y and the reason why I'm saying max I'm placing this inside of max is that I don't want I don't want the user to move my window below zero otherwise it's gonna go off screen 
below zero on the so zero on the screen would be here around here somewhere and I don't want the, 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 the user to be able to do that so by using max even though my mouse can go all the way up there my window will stop as soon as it hits zero up there I'm also using minimum down here uh, to, in, to ensure that the opposite happens when they go to the right hand side of the screen they can't move the window past the, the right hand side on the X and on the Y okay I'm grabbing the screen here okay and I'm grabbing an individual screen you can grab all the screens using uh, QGUI application dot screens and that will give you an, a list of all the screens that are available so I'm grabbing the screen using QGUI application dot screen at and that takes a Q point and because these are not Q points anymore these are just uh, variables I'm creating a Q point I'm placing X and Y in there and I'm grabbing size from QGUI application screen at basically this is gonna give me the size of my screen of the current screen and then I'm using the minimum like I said so that we don't go off screen I'm grabbing my I'm saying that give me the minimum between X between X and this value here which is the screen width okay the full width of my screen minus my geometry width and the same thing goes on the Y the full screen height minus my geometry height and that's how we achieve not letting the user take the window off screen and now that we have our X and our Y all cleaned up all we have to do is self which is the window move to the X and the Y and I'll set my variable moved to true preventing that when the mouse is released this statement this stuff doesn't go through okay if you just want to copy the code uh, I'll show you what you have to copy and we'll do a recap right now we can just copy the code here all we need is this okay copy that have you copied it nice and then we need to this and we need that 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 and finally that all right i hope this helped you and uh, i hope i start seeing some cool applications with different shapes make something shaped like a bird or a boat or something like you whatever and and also you can have a, a animation on your window you can make your window move around the screen which is awesome so if you want to do that do that as well okay so hopefully i'll be back next week with uh, the pip package all set up for us and ready so that we can start using that in our tutorials and make our life a lot easier uh, i've been doing these uh, lengthy tutorials with the explanation but i'll do a series of short tutorials that you can use as a reference like a two minute three minute tutorial uh, just giving you the basics and then a, a link to a full video like the one you just watched so i'll see you uh next week probably on the next video see you then